In this video, I'm going to be restoring a Broyhill emphasis dresser that was painted. I picked up this little boy after watching it for months on Facebook Marketplace. I made an offer to the seller and promptly picked up the piece. This dresser had been in a little girl's room for several years and the seller was looking to change her room decor. Unfortunately, a physical modification has been made to the dresser, which was the installation of a butterfly handle to the left drawer panel. It, it's a cute functional addition, but the back of the handle was never trimmed down, which ended up wearing away at the top of the drawer. If you're unfamiliar with the Broyhill Emphasis line, don't worry, so was I until I found my six drawer Broyhill Emphasis in the thrift store. The identification tags in these were not the best, so often they are missing, which it is in mine. And what I'll typically do when I find a piece I'm interested in is I will use Google Lens to search for similar images. This allows me to figure out what I'm working with and what I want to do with it. For me, the obvious choice here is to restore. These Broyhill Emphasis dressers are worth more in their original condition than they are painted. So first things first, we're going to remove that butterfly handle. Next, I'm going to use my two inch carbide scraper to remove the paint. Paint hides what's been done to the original finish underneath, and the carbide scraper will function as my archeological dig tool to uncover what has happened underneath the layers of paint. Here's a primary example on the top of the dresser. It looks like the finish was damaged by something which may have triggered the initial refinish. You can also see swirl marks on the finish, which means that the surface was scuff sanded before the paint was applied. While I do own a detailed scraper, I want to point out that you can use the flat scraper on curved edges like these unique handles. Just apply gentle pressure and allow the scraper to catch the paint as you're scraping. It doesn't require a lot of pressure, to use the scraper. It's very effective actually on latex paint. There were also quite a few gouges on the dresser, which became apparent when using the scraper. The paint had settled into these grooves and most of this is going to come out with sanding. Now I'm sure you're thinking, why would you use stripper after using the scraper? Why not just scrape the entire dresser or strip the entire dresser? And you could definitely do either one, but my goal here is to get the latex paint layer off so I don't have to use as much stripper to get the remaining finish off. It's just a personal preference and you can do whatever you like. To remove the stripper, I used a combination of my metal scraper and my stripping brush. The area that had the finish removed on the top had paint that had settled into the wood grain. The brush is also really useful for getting into little grooved areas like the front portion of the dresser. To neutralize the stripper, I used mineral spirits and steel wool. On the drawers, I did not use the carbide scraper and I regretted it. However, this is a good example as to why I like to use it and then use stripper. While scraping the paint off, you can see the finish is still on there pretty good. I had to use two coats of stripper to remove the remaining finish. The butterfly door handle left a large hole in the center of the front door that is not supposed to be there. And to fix it, we're going to use plug cutters to cut two walnut plugs for the door. The plug size was one fourth of an inch and I made sure to drill a hole to match on the door. 
This also cleaned out any of that gunk that may have accumulated from stripping. I ended up using two plugs on the front and back door so that I could color match the plugs better. After applying glue, I aligned the grain with the doors and I pressed the plugs into place. I then hand sanded them down to get close to the door as possible. I know this is a bit out of order for my normal process, but the hardware was painted, so I ended up leaving it on while I was stripping. And I'm just going to remove it so that I can let it soak in vinegar for three days, and then I'm just gonna polish it up. Next, I sanded the entire dresser using 150 grit and then 120 grit. On the flat surfaces, I used my random orbital sander and then I hand sanded all the detailed areas. I used some walnut veneer to patch up an area on the bottom right side of the dresser that had been damaged. I used General Finish's Antique Walnut Gel Stain on the piece. It was a bit lighter than the original finish, which was a brown lacquer. There are two ways that I would solve for this, and the first way would be to let the antique walnut stain dry, and then come back with a darker stain, or apply a tinted lacquer to darken the color. However, after much debate, I stuck with this color tone because honestly, I liked it. I left the handles on the drawers for the entire process. All but two had been glued on, and since I had to do the same steps for the handles as the drawer faces, it didn't make much sense to me to pry them off and then work on them separately. To seal the piece, I used General Finish's Armor Seal in Satin, which is a wipe-on polyurethane. I apply the first coat using a non-abrasive pad to make sure I coat the entire surface, and then I come back with a shop rag and wipe with the grain. For the second and third coats, I simply apply Armor Seal with the direction of the grain with a shop rag. I'm going to make what I would consider a design improvement to the dresser. The left front door panel doesn't have any handles by design and I don't want to add any to it. And that's likely how the butterfly handle ended up on the drawer in the first place. So after much thought, I decided to replace the original magnetic door latches with magnetic push latches. And I'm going to replace both since it makes sense to have them the same. After the sealer had fully dried on the dresser, I came back with a high grit sandpaper and denibbed the surface of any little particulates that landed in the finish while it was drying. Then I wiped it down with a tack cloth and applied Howard's Feed and Wax to the entire dresser, especially the drawer slides and other raw wood surfaces. These little extra steps go a long way in improving things like how easily your drawer slides and the smoothness of your end finish, so I don't recommend skipping them. I also vacuum everything before I apply the wax so that I don't have any dust or anything that gets trapped in the wax as I'm applying it. 
The metal drawer slides are using ball bearings to slide along a metal track. And to improve their functionality, I applied a silicone based lubricant to all of the metal drawer tracks. Let's take a moment to look back at what we started with. And finally, this is the finished product. I don't plan on selling this piece, though I could likely sell it for around $600 to $700 in my area, and even more if I tried to sell it online. Would I have painted this piece? No, but for a dresser that had been in a kid's room for several years, the paint protected this piece pretty well. Make sure you click the like button and subscribe and Check out the video on the screen to see how I restored a Stanley mid-century modern dresser that I also kept.